Hi everyone. I'd like to firstly say thank you very much to everyone who has helped to identify some of my finds in my recent mudlarking videos and thanks to for your comments and suggestions and feedback. I always appreciate them. Now recently I found something whilst mudlarking which when I started to research it took me back in time to World War I and this video is mostly focused on that one particular find with a few other of my war and military related mudlarking finds featured at the end. So thank you for accompanying me and I hope you enjoy it. I can just see what looks like a military button just down there by that bit of froth. Just there. I'm gonna have a close look before this boat comes past and washes it away. See it just there. Oh yes, that's definitely a military button. Dieu et mon droit on it and the lion and the unicorn. I shall give it a wash later and learn a little bit more about it. I've given it a little rub off, a little initial rub off, and so you can see there the lion and the unicorn. And Dieu et mon droit at the bottom. just come across a couple of padlocks and uh, they're pretty heavy and I wasn't sure whether to take them but because it's got like, a name stamped on it here I want to take it because I want to see if I can find out the history behind where it came from. So um, I shall pop it in my bag and lug it home. I've got another one in there as well. So I can make something with it, perhaps. I'd like to see yeah, if I can see. Well, that's that's not part of it. Where it's come from. So yeah, two padlocks coming home to be cleaned off. When I found this padlock the other day, I nearly didn't bring it back with me. And uh, I never imagined that it would literally unlock such a wonderful story about a family, the Morrow family. And what's um, really lovely is that two of the, the uh, sons in the Morrow family fought in World War I. In fact, one of them fought in World War I and World War II. And um, this find has led me to discover the story of the Morrow family, which I'm now going to tell you. The first thing I discovered when I started to research G. E. Morrow and Son was this article in the London Gazette dated 19th November 1931, which revealed that G. E. Morrow was a mast, oar, skull and pump maker from Limehouse in the East End of London. I then went on to find out that George Edward Morrow was born in 1858 in Australia, but by the time he married Londoner Clara Powell in 1882, 
His ore maker business was established in Brightling Sea Place, Limehouse, an area which has long been associated with maritime history and shipbuilding in the East End of London. And here we are. This is Brightling Sea Place and it was at numbers one and two and three possibly where George Edward Morrow had his business or where he ran it from. And it was here where George and Clara lived and here where they went on to have 11 children by 1899. Here you can see G.E. Morrow's premises and some children just in front of the door. So I've come here today to find St Anne's Lime House, which is where George and Clara Morrow had pretty much all their children baptised, at least their births were registered here. And here is St Anne's Lime House. So I'm now going to go and explore. They had 11 children all together and five of them, at least five of them, died in infancy. So they had them baptised here and then very shortly afterwards they died. My research led me to discover that George and Clara's son, Frank Alfred Morrow, fought in both World War I and World War II. An article in the London Gazette dated 13th February 1917 said that Sergeant Frank Alfred Morrow of the 3rd Worcester Regiment, service number 14512, was awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal for his actions during the Leipzig Salient during the Battle of Tjepval on 7th of July 1916. A diary entry by a soldier says, Sergeant F. A. Morrow took command of leaderless men of both units, held his ground and re-established the position. Attack and counter-attack followed in quick succession and the losses were very heavy, but the troops fought splendidly. Records show that on that day in 1917, Frank's regiment lost 145 men. Sidney Walter Morrow was George and Clara's youngest surviving son when he was sent to the Western Front with the 10th Battalion Royal Fusiliers, otherwise known as the City of London Royal Fusiliers, on 18th of May 1918, just three days after his 19th birthday. Four months later, on 14th of September, Corporal Sidney Walter Morrow, service number 72002, lost his life in a battle east of Trecot in Flanders. And this is the memorial that I am looking for and it stands in the in the graveyard of St Anne's in Limehouse and it's registered on the Imperial War Museum website 
database of war memorials as memorial number 625 dedicated to those that lost their lives in the great war who came from Limehouse and this is where I'm hoping and expecting to find Sidney Walter Morrow's name so let's go and have a look memory of the men of Limehouse who fell in the Great War 1914-1918. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Of any names not graved in perishable stone, God holds eternal record in his heart alone. So let's go and have a look. All these names, all these men from families in Limehouse who lost their lives in the Great War and Sydney. Sydney Walter Morrow is just here. S.W. Morrow, who died on the 14th of September. 1918 at the age of 19 in Flanders in France. May we remember them? I have to say it's, it's rather emotional and moving coming here, seeing the names of all these people. And again I'm just so so astounded that a simple Thames mudlarking find can, in this case, literally unlock a piece of history and bring that person and many others back to life again. Sydney, who's actually buried in France in a um, cemetery over there. And here's the padlock that I found that I nearly didn't bring home. And I'm so glad I did to be able to just bring back to life some of the people that were in the Morrow family. George Edward Morrow, Limehouse war maker and him and his wife Clara who had 11 children several of whom died at least five in childbirth and one of their children Sydney who died um, at the age of 19 far too young Sydney never came back to Limehouse he was buried in the Hermes Hill British Cemetery in France, along with several unknown British soldiers. He was awarded the Victory and the British War Medal. Looking back at the photo of G. E. Morrow's shop in Limehouse, I wonder if two of the children could be Frank and Sydney. By paying tribute to them this November 2018, a hundred years since the end of World War I, this is also a tribute to all those who fought and lost their lives in World War I, including those unknown soldiers who we will never know about. May we never forget them.
as long as I 